Calcaneal fractures. A brief video. A historical method. A depiction of an attempt to reduce the blown out lateral wall of the calcaneus after the fracture. Source, adapted from dislocations and joint fractures by Cotton F.J. 1908. Two percent of all fractures. Sixty to seventy-five percent of them are displaced intraarticular fractures. Ten percent have associated spine fractures. 26% have other extremity injuries. 90% occur in young men 21 to 45 years. Anatomy of calcaneus. Superior view. Notice the posterior facet. Anterior and middle facets. Anatomy of calcaneus. Medial view. Notice the sustentaculum tali. Notice the groove for flexor hallucic longus. Mechanism of injury. High energy trauma. Motor vehicle accident. Fall from a height. Lateral process of talus acts as wedge. Impaction fracture. See the figure that depicts the mechanism. Clinical features. Complaint. Pain. Swelling not able to bear weight. Physical examination. Marked swelling. Echimosis. Blisters. Tenderness and movements restricted. Other foot and spine also should be examined. Evaluation. Thorough primary, secondary, tertiary survey. Bilateral injuries. Spine injuries, other extremity fractures can occur in 10 to 15 percent. Routine lumbar spine films. X ray measurements. Bowler's angle. Normal 25 to 40 degrees. Severity, lower bowler's angle correlates with outcome. Notice the radiographs that depicts the bowler's angle and in a fractured case a flattened angle can be seen below radiograph. Critical angle of Gisbane. Normal 120 to 145 degrees. Change in angle indicates change in relationship between posterior, medial, and anterior facets. Radiologic features. If only the lateral half of the posterior facet is fractured and displaced a split in the articular, surface will be seen as a double density. Notice the radiograph. View. Helpful intraoperatively. View of posterior facet. Check intraarticular displacement. Positioning. 20 degrees R view mortis. 10 degrees 40 degrees planter. Radine's view. Posterior facet. Notice the radiograph. Red arrows show the posterior facet. CT scan and 3D. Notice the axial, coronal vase sagittal views. Notice the three-dimensional CT view. Partho-anatomy. The red line demonstrates the prima fracture line. The star sign is demonstrates the constant fragment. Notice radiographs and CT. Notice the figures. Partho-anatomy. The constant fragment. Notice the CT. Partho-anatomy. Secondary fracture lines. Follow the green line. 
Extend posteriorly through tuberosity or into anterior process. Create three parts. Essex Lopresti. This classification was first published in 1952. It is useful in separating the joint fractures into two types. We see first an example of a joint depression, and in the lower image a tongue type. The joint depression is notorious for the degree of joint involvement and displacement. Essex Lopresti P. The mechanism, reduction technique, and results in fractures of the os calcis, 1951-52. British Journal of Surgery. 1952 Mar, 39157, 395-419. Essex Lopresti. Note that in the tongue type fracture the fracture exits posteriorly, splitting the posterior portion into two. Different fixation techniques are required in order to reduce and stabilize this deformity. Sanders classification. Based on CT findings. Number of fragments. Two fragments is classified as type 2. Three fragments is classified as type 3. Four or more fragments is classified as type 4. Predictive of results. Sanders classification. Notice the CT findings, fracture lines and classification logic. Anterior process fracture. This type of fracture happened due to forceful inversion type sprain. Frequently missed. Most are small. Treat like sprain. If large and displaced and this necessitate perform open reduction and internal fixation. Tuberosity avulsion fractures. Achilles avulsion. Wound problems. Surgical urgency. Lag screws. Sustentaculum fracture. Most small and non-displaced. Non-operative. If large and displaced. Open reduction and internal fixation through the medial approach and apply buttress plate technique. Timing of surgery. Wrinkle test. When the patient dorsiflexes and averts the foot. If skin wrinkling is seen no edema is present. When the wrinkle test is positive. Patient is ready for surgery. Indications for ORIF. Displaced intraarticular fractures. Displaced fractures of calcaneal tuberosity. Fracture dislocations of calcaneus. Selected open fractures of calcaneus. Contraindications. Diabetes, relative. Vascular insufficiency. Smoker, relative. Severe swelling. Open fractures, relative. Neuropathic. Non-compliant patient. Inexperienced surgeon. Extended lateral approach. Skin incision. The vascular supply to the planned flap is a watershed area. More than in any other incision used for surgical exposures in trauma, the corner of the soft tissue flap at the juncture of the longitudinal and vertical posterior incisions must be treated with infinite care. The posterior arm of the incision is placed midway between the fibula and Achilles tendon. The horizontal arm is placed in line with the base of the fifth metatarsal. They meet at a corner where skin handling must be optimized. Development of flap. At the corner, the incision is made directly to bone to ensure that one raises a full thickness flap. The undermining of the edges must be avoided. One creates a full thickness flap and... As the flap is developed, one divides the retinaculum and detaches the fibulocalcaneal and talocalcaneal ligaments from bone. The perineal tendons and the sural nerve are within the flap and are not exposed. As the flap is developed upwards, one exposes the subtalar joint and the sinus tarsi. 
Capsulotomy. The subtalar joint capsule is opened. See figure. No touch technique. Hematoma is removed and retraction K wires are placed into the lateral process of talus and fibula. Reduction. The drawing demonstrates typical positions of the five standard fragments that need reduction. The surgical tactic that will be used identifies a step-by-step -step process for the reduction maneuver. Generally, one begins by identifying the constant fragment, i.e., the sustentacular fragment, 4, which remains attached to the talus and does not displace. The reconstruction of the os calcis builds on this stable fragment and therefore one begins the reconstruction anteriorly and medially with this fragment and works simultaneously on the posterior, 2, and lateral, 3, articular fragments. To achieve this, it is often necessary to apply traction to fragment 2 which helps to restore the three-dimensional shape of the os calcis. Once these are in place, one closes the lateral wall like a door, which is the final step of the reconstruction. Fragments are maintained temporarily with K wires. The final step is the fixation. Reduction. Once the lateral extended approach is completed and the hematoma is removed, the fracture lines are visualized and identified. Next, a chance screw is inserted into the posterior, or tuberosity, fragment, too, from lateral to medial, going through both cortices. It will serve as a joystick to aid in the reduction. Reduction of the tuberosity fragment. The next step is the reduction of the tuberosity fragment, 2, to the constant medial sustentacular fragment, 4. Once the fragment is reduced, it is held in position with two K wires which are introduced in an anteroposterior superior direction from the posterior inferior aspect of the tuberosity. They are directed superiorly and anteriorly into the constant medial fragment, 4. Elevation of the lateral articular surface. With the tuberosity, 2, reduced to the constant piece, 4, while ensuring that there is no varus of the hind foot, 1 reduces now the lateral articular piece, 3. It needs to be elevated in order to successfully reconstruct the articular surface, the posterior facet. Preliminary fixation. Once reduced, it is supported with K wires, which are introduced from the lateral side into the constant medial fragment. In inserting the K wires, one should keep in mind that they should not occupy the place judged best for the insertion of the subchondral lag screws which will stabilize the articular surface. While the reduction and fixation proceeds, one must be careful at every step to make certain that the hind foot remains in neutral, or in slight valgus, in the axial view. Varus of the hind foot must be avoided. Physiologic valgus. With the patient in the lateral position, and working from the lateral side, there is a tendency for the hind foot to fall into varus. Throughout the surgical maneuvers, the surgeon must check continuously that the hind foot remains in valgus. By continuously checking and using K wires as reduction tools and temporary fixation, physiologic valgus is maintained until the final reduction and fixation is obtained. Fixation Subchondral lag screw Once the reduction of the articular surface is achieved, it is maintained with a subchondral lag screw which runs from lateral anteromedially into the constant medial subchondral fragment. Thus, when drilling the hole for the lag screw, the drill bit must be directed carefully in these three directions. A. Lateral to medial. B. Posterior to anterior. C. Cephalid to chordad. In this way, 
the threaded portions of the screw will be directed into the strong medial sustentacular cortical bone. Fixation On the medial side is the neurovascular bundle which ends up frequently at the tip of the subchondral lag screw. If one allows the drill bit, or the screw, to protrude too far medially, one can damage the neurovascular bundle or FHL tendon. Bone deficit and C. The articular surface of the os calcis is impacted by the talus into the underlying cancellous bone. Once the articular fragments are disimpacted and elevated, varying degrees of void result. Studies show that bone graft is not necessary, yet some surgeons fill the void with bone substitute materials, and other surgeons choose to ignore the void and use locking plate fixation to maintain reductions. Replace lateral wall. Apply plate and screws. Recheck radiographs. Alignment. Subtalar, calcaneo cuboid joint. Hardware position. Screw length. Clausure. Check perineal tendons. Drain. Layered closure. 1. Periosteum and subcutaneous tissue should be in one layer. 2. Skin. A traumatic technique. Advance flap toward apex. Algawa Donati sutures. Thanks for watching this video. Do not forget to subscribe to my non-profit YouTube channel.